Hey, I'm Kendrick, and today I want to talk a little bit about cybersecurity for beginners, like to help you maybe understand some of the things that you need to in order to get a job in the field uh, and also address maybe some misconceptions in the cybersecurity field. Uh, the first thing is, like, let's talk about in cybersecurity, what are you actually doing? Because this is important because this is going to like lead into the advice I'm going to talk to a little bit later about how you should study to get a job in cybersecurity. So the first thing in cybersecurity, you're going to have something that's very simple, overlooked. Most people are not even studying or learning about this when they're trying to get an intermediate or beginner job in cybersecurity, and that's patch management. So typically the way it works is um, every piece of software out there at some point in time or another is going to have a vulnerability. And in order to fix that vulnerability, so one of the methods of fixing that vulnerability is by applying patches. And Microsoft releases patches once a month minimum on a day called patch Tuesday. It's the second Tuesday of each week. A lot of people probably don't even know this because they're too busy doing other things and really don't have a full understanding of just what happens in the real cybersecurity world and what companies are looking for. So those patches are applied. And then some of the things you have to be concerned about those patches is sometimes Microsoft will be in a hurry to release a patch and there'll be issues with the patch and it can break things. So a lot of times you have to understand, like you have to be able to test patches. So you deploy it to a test group. That's a lot of times it's going to be the IT group or somebody that you can do that's low risk. And then you'll deploy to a bigger group and a bigger group until ultimately you're able to apply it to the entire company. But you always have to make sure patches are tested. There are approval processes and a lot of things that go into doing this. So that's one method and that's part of security. But once again, there's a lot more. So in addition to the applying patches, one of the things that people don't really talk about a lot, I guess, is the fact that you have to scan for vulnerabilities because not every vulnerability is resolved by applying a patch. So a lot of the things we do in the field is we have to manually like understand what the vulnerability, well, manually fix the vulnerability, which means we have to spend time understanding what the vulnerability is, how it affects the the computer or device that we're dealing with. A lot of times we have to talk with, you know, developers or engineers or other business people within the parts of the business to understand like, okay, if we fix this, can we fix this with this piece of software? Because a lot of times it may not even be a piece of software that we've ever touched before. So we have to do a lot of like working in politics and negotiation and stuff like that to kind of identify that. So scan for the vulnerabilities. Once you identify the vulnerabilities, have to perform either the patching or you know, correlate that with a patch or manually fix it. And that is a lot of work. And I can tell you, this is why most, company never, most companies never fix their vulnerabilities because taking the time to fix patches is not fun and it's not a service that a lot of companies offer. So in addition to that, you got your endpoint detection and response. Most of you have probably heard of that. That's going to be like Windows Defender, like uh, CrowdStrike, Sentinel One, uh, Sophos, like the, all these different companies. And basically, it used to be McAfee and Symantec. They had this product called Antivirus. But at a certain point, they weren't able to keep up. And you had to start using artificial intelligence, which is able to recognize patterns and behavior. And it's able to kind of detect and understand whether or not this is a malicious threat. So they now call the new antivirus, the next generation past antivirus, is called endpoint detection and response. And then the companies jumped on and said, hey, we can make a lot of money. So they started spending it, say, hey, you can have XDR, you know, ex well, I don't know if it's extended detection and response and MDR, managed detection and response. But all it is is basically they're building on top of endpoint detection and response with these other offerings they have. But you're basically, it's your software that's going to actively protect you against threats. Now, that's all good. So I, so for me, like having those core three right there is great. That's going to allow you to kind of be pretty secure. But then you haven't even talked about your, your Google, you know, your Google Workspace, your G Suite, uh, your Office 365, your Slack environment, your Zoom environment, all of these different cloud environments. Guess what? None of those products we just discussed is going to protect you there. So you have to actually have cloud security in addition to that. And so there are a number of products that actually do connect and they use an API, uh, which is a what application programming interface is what API stands for. And it's able to communicate and, and kind of like connect with the login that comes from those environments, where, whether it be Zoom, Slack, or whatever. And we chase this kind of stuff all over the world to see because we're seeing what IP addresses this traffic is originating with. Software is alerting us saying, okay, this person was here in New York and now they're showing up in in Hong Kong or something like that. So we have a lot of these type of laws that we're alerted on and so we have to follow up on those. But you gotta have some kind of cloud security management in order to be secure. So you need to make sure that you're fully aware 
up that this exists and also familiar with and how it works and always any things I'm talking about, if you can get your hands on it, which I'm going to be helping you all in the future to do so, then it's definitely going to increase your chances of being able to get a job. Now, once we have cloud security, we want to talk about your SIMs and your logging. You probably have heard of Splunk or, or Elastic. Those are your two, uh, two of your major SIMs. Um, and then as far as your vulnerability scanning, I did mention you got Tenable and Qualys. Those are two of your vulnerability scanning uh, softwares that are very popular. But when it comes to SIMs, it's basically you're taking logs from firewalls, you're taking logs from maybe uh, domain controllers, which is your controllers where your window that has your accounts for your Windows computers. And you're taking those logs and you're aggregating them together. And then you're giving the, the cybersecurity people, which is us, the ability to use a query language or to use basically it's just short programming code to be able to to send queries or send requests to the database that we're aggregating from all of these different security appliances and to be able to kind of like take this data correlate it together by timestamp because that's very important and i cannot reiterate how important it is to make sure that all your timestamps are synced up so that you're not looking at one event that took place at three o'clock and one event that take, took place at four o'clock because you miscorrelated or because the times aren't aren't synced so a lot of times you want to use gmt greenish mean time to be able to um, to make sure that all of your products are 100% using the same time zone. So GMT is recommended for all of your products. So anyway, it's bringing those logs together and then you're able to go through those logs and run different queries to kind of see if you're able to find things. So that's where it's really important to make sure that you have some software gives you like threat models that you can uh, implement like Splunk Security is, a, is one of the examples. It has like a lot of stuff built into it to kind of help detect the various type of behavior. But that also leads into the next one, which is threat hunting. And so just want to deal with a misconception. Like for, for me, I, I'm SAN certified. I have two SAN certifications. And for me, threat hunting is not necessarily like you get a detection and then you follow it up. That's not what SANS teaches you. That's not threat hunting. That's not threat <laughs> That's not threat hunting. That's actually more incident response, right? So when I think of threat hunting, you're talking about actually, when I sit down, I take a scenario that's likely to happen, and then I follow up on a scenario. It's not based on the detection, it's me being more proactive and trying to determine if something is happening in my environment, and then being able to build alerts and models to help to identify and uh, help, help us to basically not be blindsided if this type of behavior happens. So for instance, you know, someone issuing a who am I command, you know, or or something like a PWD command. Maybe that's something you may want to look at if it's not common in your environment, because if I'm hacking, I'm going to do who am I to maybe like understand the context of where I, what user I've just exploited, you know. So maybe you'll look at something like that or, you know, password resets or account lockouts and, you know, invalid login attempts. Those are the type of things that you're going to be looking at for looking for in your SIM logs. And so anyway, this is just an intro just to kind of give you an overall view and understanding of what you really need to be preparing for and why just simply going to try hack me, hack the box in a lot of these places. They're going to give you some knowledge and they're going to use some skill. But once again, a lot of people are doing that same approach and not getting hired because they're not thinking about it comprehensively what employers are looking for. So anyway, I love to hear from you, like hear about your your journey to become a a cybersecurity professional and some of the challenges you run into. So please drop a like on the video if this has been helpful and please leave some comments in the description and let me know uh, what you're facing and what else I can share. So I've been doing this for a long time, a really long time. Thanks for watching.